going on everybody? I'm here for a recap video from the Saturday, November 25th slate. I'm really bad at getting that out. As you can see, I'm just hanging out on my stacks of cash. Um, it's a pretty good place to be, just laying around on money. Uh, last night was good. Um, the chop, most of the chalk uh, went well. I had two guys that were very low owned, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, one hit, one didn't really hit, and we'll talk about that shortly. But I got a good night's sleep just laying here on this uh, colorful money. But now it's time to dig into the recap and show you guys how I did. So, what you see here is a breakdown of my performance. I put up 349.6. I had $65 in entry fees. I returned 107.60. Um, you know, that's like 40% ROI. I will take it. And then you can see my lineup here on the right hand side or up in the table uh, Tim Frazier, TJ McConnell, Clay Thompson, Bradley Beal, Paul George, Omri Caspi. Anthony Davis, Pascal Siakam, Joel Embiid. I'm going to go through each position individually and then touch a little bit on my lineup as we chip away at it. But point guard, um, I was set on McConnell and Frazier pretty early uh, just because of the value that would open up. Um, it shouldn't be crazy for me to tell you that TJ McConnell was probably the best play of the night. He put up 53.9 fantasy points in 36 minutes. Um, it was a 11.5x, which is basically like getting, you know, more than two good guys in one spot. Just amazing. Absolutely amazing. From there, um, you know, Frazier put up 21.6 in 28 minutes, but getting 21.6 at minimum salary is gigantic. Um, so he put up 7.2x. Uh, these guys were both basically like 50% owned, so I'm happy that I was on both of them. If you weren't on one of the two, I know Curry was looked at a lot. I uh, started off pretty quiet, ended up finishing with 42.8 fantasy points in 36 minutes. Not really probably what you were looking for. Um, but if you're going down the line of the, the good point guard plays, I think everybody's probably pretty happy with what they got out of Russ, basically 55. Um, I liked Dame heading into the night. I thought it was a better matchup than CJ. And Dame ended up putting up 43, which is, you know, close. Um, my favorite play of point guard last night was Lowry. He put up 38.6 in 27 minutes. So he would have been short of the 5x value, but he was playing really well. Um, they just happened to shellac the shit out of Atlanta. 112.78. So that's what, 22. They beat him by 34. Um, it's going to make something else that I did look a lot better, but um, Lowry had a, had some trouble getting to that 5x number, you know, just because of the blowout. I, I didn't see a 30 something point blowout coming. And then uh, we hit, you know, it was a little bit of middle ground in this section. And then uh, Alfred Payton with a big game, 46 points in 29 minutes. Uh, Bledsoe with 37 and 30. Those are both pretty good. Collison looked good um, without Oladipo in there. Um, he was able to get to 5x. And then uh, if you were able to get on to Jarrett Jack with all of the Knicks news, I wouldn't have recommended it, but he would have been... A value play for you and then finally Jared Bayless uh, put up 27 points in 23 minutes at a $3,400 salary so ultimately I'm very happy with what I got out of point guard um, there were a couple spots that I could have been that you know would have been pretty similar but being able to get McConnell and Frazier their total price $7,700 um, like McConnell blew that out of the water himself. So I'm very, very happy with that that performance. Uh, let's freeze this here. 
so next up, shooting guard. Um, I was on Beal and Clay, and those were two plays that I would have had a lot of trouble getting away from. Um, Frazier and McConnell were, were value type plays, whereas Beal and Clay, I wanted to have um, because of the injury situations on both of their teams. John Wall out, I want Bradley Beal until his price goes up to you know mid eights to high eights, and with Clay, um, I thought the matchup was really good, and then. You know, if Durant's not there, that's just a lot of shots to redistribute. And Clay take you know takes a bit of a haircut on that on a night-to-night -night basis as sort of a glue guy for that team. Just grind on defense, you know, knock down open shots. But if he has the opportunity to go out and score, he's going to do it. That's why I really liked him. Um, Beal ended up putting up 46.7 fantasy points in 35 minutes, which was 6.1x. Um, I couldn't be happier that that went exactly like I wanted it to go. And then uh, Clay put up 43.8 in 36 minutes, which was 6.6x. Again, uh, that could not have gone better for me. Um, I could not be happier. Uh, there's nothing that I would change um, in hindsight. Harden ended up getting to 62.4 in 36 minutes. That was not looking uh, like it was going to happen early. Um, it was the first box score I looked at after I woke up. And I was a little nervous that, you know, some of the chalk rebounded. DeRozan had a terrible game. Uh, that's the first, like, major egg that I've seen. Looking through this, it's 16 fantasy points in 27 minutes. Um, he just wasn't as huge of a part of that gigantic blowout. Um, they got, Toronto got up big time um, with their second unit. And that sort of put the game out of reach. After that, uh, Middleton and Tim Hardaway Jr. Uh, not or Middleton and Tim Hardaway Jr. not very good um, last night. Uh, I hated the idea of taking Hardaway Jr. last night. I, I hope that people were able to, to get away from that. Um, when that news came out of Porzingis and Cantor being out, that the Rockets line dropped jumped to twenty. Um, like you just don't want to have that part of the game. Am I talking about the right game? There's so many basketball games that I ultimately confused the hell out of myself. That's who they played, right? Yeah, Rockets next. God. Still working on the coffee, gents. Um, yeah, it's just, if a team's projected to get beat by 20, like, even if Tim Hardaway is going to get burned and he got 37 minutes, they're supposed to get beat by 20 for a reason. They're, they're, they have no offense. Uh, anything could happen in that game. It's just very unreliable. Um, Donovan Mitchell and Lou Williams, both with big games. Uh, I hope you weren't on Batum, 11.6. Drew Holiday uh, got off to a crazy start. Ended up putting up 40 fantasy points in 39 minutes. Um, really great performance out of Drew. It's touch and go for him sometimes. Redick put up 35 and a half. I want to say that he had eight threes, but it was a bundle. Um, you're shooting the lights out, so he must have had a real big score on DK. Marcus Smart, uh, who I was looking to pivot to if I was able to scramble in the last couple minutes, um, ultimately went for 32-7. Um, you know, he had no problem hitting value. And if you were looking for major value plays down the line, um, the only one would really be Norman Powell, 27.9 points at 3,800 salary. Buddy Heald went off and got 38. Um, I don't really think that he was terribly in play, and he did that in 25 minutes. So even if I were projecting him for 25 minutes, he wouldn't have looked like a, a, a great play. Um, shooting guard was just kind of what you would have expected. Uh, nothing crazy happened out unless somebody was on DeRozan. Small forward. Um, this is the only place that I would say that I went wrong. Um, somebody will probably disagree and say Embiid, but we could talk about that in a bit. Um, I loved Paul George last night. He ended up putting up 35 fantasy points in 39 minutes, which is 4x. So he underperformed, um, and I loved him going into the game last night. And I want to pull up the box score for those that didn't see it, because I'm not really sure how to manage this. Now, Paul George was 2% owned 
in my 500 and however many people double up. And that's usually the baseline that I'm looking for. I, I want to know who's getting rostered in cash. The Mavs beat the Thunder by 16. I would say, and it could be up for debate, four of the Thunder starters are better than the best person on the Mavs. Like, I would rather have Mello, Paul George, and Russ for sure over anybody else on the Mavs. And you can make a case that you would rather have Steven Adams than Harrison Barnes, I guess, is the second is the best guy on the Mavs. To get beat by 16 is shameful. But here's the Paul George line. 1 for 12 from the field, 0 for 4 from 3. 2 points. 10 assists, 6 rebounds, 4 steals. He still got the 4x on fully ancillary stats, which is amazing. Absolutely crazy. Especially for someone who normally gets 57% of his fantasy production per possession from scoring. If he even just has like a an off night, if that's a 3 of 12, he hits value. Like, if he gets to the line at all, they shot 13 free throws as a team. Westbrook shot 9. Jeremy Grant shot 4. No one else shot a free throw besides Russell Westbrook and Jeremy Grant. Like, even if you don't get to the line a lot, that's pretty hard to do. So, I obviously made a mistake taking Paul George. I saw something that no one else was looking at. Um... And his performance is below value. I still think the matchup was good, but evidently I should have been somewhere else. And in theory, I probably should have stepped down to Lance Stevenson, who had a huge amount of value open up with Oladipo out. And I should have paid up elsewhere. But I don't think that I would backtrack to that information because I really like Paul George. I don't I'm not really sure why he was only 2% owned last night. That seems crazy to me. But that's telling me that he should be probably somewhere in like the 8100 range and the price is too high. But for his minutes I just like he had he filled the box sheet he just couldn't score and no one could for the Thunder. Makes me wonder what Paul George's line would have looked like had uh, everything gone well. But ultimately, that's a miss. That's something I need to think about. Um, I should have thought more about ownership, but uh, it was just a full-on miss. I would have never expected 2%. I would have expected, you know, 10, 15, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, so that's a miss. And it, you know, it cost me a little bit. Um, the whole top flight of small forward wasn't very good. Uh, I didn't like Giannis at all. I never looked at him, um, and he put up 47, which isn't really what you're looking for. Um, you know, Covington was fine. Harrison Barnes was fine. They didn't. They're not. They're not the guys that sank your lineup. You know, just like George didn't sink me. He got to four. Um, but the best play would have been Otto Porter if you're paying up in any way for anybody. He put up 51 in 36 minutes. Um, he was just sort of in a in a middle zone for me, so I didn't have any, I didn't see any uh, way to get him in my lineup. But with Wall out, he obviously looked pretty good. Uh, Fournier and uh, Torian Prince both laid eggs. Kyle Anderson with a big game, 37 and a half. I think he had a bundle of steals. Um, but small forward was pretty much just a wasteland. What you wanted to do was be on some combination of probably Lance Stevenson and Otto Porter. Uh, Stevenson put up 30 fantasy points at 3,700. Kelly Oubre, 26.7 in 24 minutes. Really good game. Um, but Stevenson was definitely the play at small forward for value. Um, and if you could have got him and Otto Porter together, that, that's probably what you were looking for. 
Now, power forward, Anthony Davis started off super cold. I guess I didn't even touch on Caspi, um, just circling back. Uh, so I had Caspi as my other small forward, 3,300. Um, he put up 21.8, which was enough to get to 6.6x. You know, that's right where I needed him to be. I would have liked a little bit more, but at 3,300, I'm not um, going to get too broken up. I would have had to made, make full sale changes. I only had $100 left, so I couldn't have got to Lance without making big changes. Um, Anthony Davis started off quiet, and I was a little nervous. Um, I had basically like uh, half of my salary go early and then half go late. So um, of the guys that went early, it was, you know, Frazier, McConnell, Beal, and Siakam and uh and and bead and i was trending you know well over 150 from those guys so i knew if these guys if my second half guys can just hit value you know i should be able to cash ad started off real cold he had like one fantasy point in the first six minutes and i got really nervous ultimately he finished with 56 fantasy points um which was enough to get him to 5.1 x i will take it um especially in a game where you know they got they got beat. Um, I had looked into pivoting to Blake because I thought it looked pretty good. Just couldn't figure out what to do with that additional money. Um, Blake put up 46 in 38 minutes at 9,400 salary. Just a, a great performance for him. Um, I was never really on Aldridge, so I never really looked into him. But, you know, you got 37.4 out of him. Draymond was a guy that a lot of people were asking me questions about. Uh, I looked at his profile. I dug into him pretty deeply to see if that was an even bigger step down I could take from AD. I just didn't see it. He ended up putting up 33, uh, which is short of value. Um, but it just wasn't something I liked. And then um, I never was really looking in this sort of section. I never really paid too much attention to Aaron Gordon. Ultimately, he played pretty well. Um, I didn't. I liked Mello. He was third in my list of the three main guys over the Thunder. Um, he didn't play very well, so I'm glad that I didn't end up there. John Collins, I feel bad for anybody that ended up on him. 19 minutes, 9 fantasy points. Just a, a big-time goose egg. Um, I know t people were on Tatum with the Jalen Brown news. Uh, I, the, another one that I didn't really see. You know, Revisionist history, obviously, but not good. Um, I'm never going to be getting Zebo, so... I don't care what he puts up. Um, Sarich obviously looked great with Ben Simmons out, 5,300. Uh, he put up 33.4, did everything you could ask. Um, so aside from Anthony Davis, I, for those that were watching my live stream beforehand, uh, this was the last position that I ironed out. I had... A toss-up between Serge Ibaka and Pascal Siakam. And I ultimately ended up going with Pascal Siakam, who was 1.4% owned in my double-up. And it paid off for me. He put up 31.8 fantasy points at $4,700. So he got 6.8x. Amazing. Um... I'm very, very happy with the way that shook out. He got a lot of extra run. Uh, he was playing well with the second team, and they opened up the game. In hindsight, it's probably a bad play. I shouldn't have been on someone that's 1.4% owned. I don't hate it as much, or I wouldn't hate it as much if Paul George was owned a little bit higher, but I... I definitely feel like I missed there in my George Siakam combo. And in it probably should have been some sort of like Lance Stevenson and let's see, that drops me a thousand dollars. So I can put a thousand onto George, so a ninety nine. So really I probably should have done Blake and Lance Stevenson, which would have been 46 points and th so 76 instead of the 35 and 31 so six so I, I probably left 10 points on the table whoops 
um, by not thinking about ownership as much as I should have. Uh, the George one, I would have had trouble getting off of there, but Siakam, I could have definitely seen that switch because he was my last guy out. But I'm happy because I made the right decision. I went with Siakam over Serge Ibaka um, just because I think he's playing better, and that paid off for me. So I was able to get you know 6.8x value on a 1% guy owned, which is really huge um, for differentiation, especially with having so many guys that were 50% or higher in that area. Um, I needed to tweak a little bit just to give myself some some upside. And then at center, just to close this out, I had Embiid. Um, it wasn't looking great for him. He ended up with 28 minutes and 38.8 fantasy points, which is under value. He put up 3.8x. Um, not happy with his performance. I expected more. I didn't think the cold was going to really matter, but he was 50% owned, so I don't care too much. Um, I was on the right side of the ownership, and that's okay with me. Um, nothing else big broke. Uh, Boogie was, you know, not what you were looking for. Dwight Howard had a terrible game. DeAndre Jordan had a terrible game. Miles Turner had a terrible game. Vooch was pretty good. Uh, the the real value was in this middle section here, where you can get Horford, Capella, Nurkic, Pau Gasol, Willie Cauley Stein, all with really big games. Um, and if you wanted to, if you if you like the way the news broke um, with Cantor and Porzingis out, then Kyle O'Quinn got 26 minutes and put up 50 fantasy points. Um, so he was the sneak play of the day, I think. Um, you would have wanted to get him in there and pay up across the board for, you know, if I could have got down to O'Quinn and up from Siakam to Blake or something along those lines. But, you know, you don't want, like I, I, I said in the live video and talking about Tim Hardaway Jr., I, I just couldn't see myself landing on any Knicks with the way that that game was supposed to go. Kyle O'Quinn could have played eight minutes. They could have played all sorts of goons in a blowout. But, in the end, this was my lineup, and it went well. Uh, I, I had a really good night. I, I can't complain one bit. Um, it's nice to be able to get back on the winning ways. I had a pretty good feeling about last night, which I know doesn't mean shit, but I was happy about it. Um, based on my ownership percentages, I had a 1 in 258,000 lineup, which works for me. Um, Paul George and Siakam are going to do that when you have everybody at coin flips you need a couple guys lower just to make a little differentiation but i think i ate enough chalk last night i'm happy 349.6 is great um so that's my breakdown for last night's slate uh, a successful breakdown at that um it's always good to be successful when you're going to do a live stream and you put your lineup out there uh makes me happy so we've got a three game set tonight nothing super fun um i think it's two early games and a later game let me double check yeah we got uh miami and chicago at 3 30 which is blick we've got phoenix and minnesota at 3 30 which is fun for fantasy and then uh brooklyn and memphis at six which is blick um not the best fantasy night i am going to put out projections and i am going to do a quick slate breakdown video um, I can't necessarily guarantee that I'm going to do a live stream at 3.30. It doesn't, it's not really the best fit and nobody's going to give a shit since football will be on, but I am going to put that out there for anybody that wants it. So, um, that's all I've got right now. Uh, you can see I have my two results images that I wanted to show you guys. And then I was trying to find a good, uh, laying on top of money type thing. I was going to go with the breaking bad, uh, with me laying next to Huel, <laughs> but I couldn't make it look right. I looked pretty ridiculous, um, but I thought that would have been fun. But that's it. Uh, I hope everybody else took positive advice from one of my two videos yesterday and was able to win some money. I think it was a, a good night in fantasy. Uh, let me know in the comments how you did. Um, if you were able to, to cash in anything, I'd love to hear about it. Um, until then, I'm gonna go ahead and 
record that slate breakdown for tonight. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.